Welcome to the next lecture on nuclear organization of the genome. Don't copy and distribute. So the main learning objectives of this lecture are to learn about uh, the purpose and mechanics of techniques for measuring genome-genome uh, and genome-protein interactions, like ChIP-seq that we've uh, learned about recently, DAM-ID and hi -C. Uh, in particular, we want to make sure we know the limitations and the advantages of each of these technologies. Uh, we also want to make sure that you understand what exactly a LAD is and a TAD is, and how they relate to each other and genome organization. And we'd also like to make sure you understand how to interpret uh, high C data, so more specifically, uh, the heat maps are that are typically associated with high C. And so you want to make sure you understand what, a, what it means for a high C heat map to be block diagonal, what do interactions uh, on the diagonal represent, how do we identify TADs, um, and you know, how do you identify certain regulatory structures like super enhancers, uh, as well as where do, where do biases typically come to play in high C data analysis. And so to motivate uh, this lecture, here I'm showing you a transmission electron microscope image of a mouse pancreatic uh, nucleus. And so here you can see that the nucleus is approximately about 6 micrometers long. And within that 6 micrometers, uh, this mouse cell has to fit about 2 meters worth of DNA into it. And so obviously the DNA has to be packed in some way uh, to be able to fit into a 6 micrometer diameter nucleus. And it has to be packed in a way that allows it to be folded and unfolded quickly uh, in, a, in a controlled way such that you can properly express all the different genes and uh, elements within your genome. And so to achieve this packing of the genome into such a small nucleus, uh, the genome is organized at different scales of resolution. And so at the most fundamental level, of course, the genome is a linear uh, linear DNA sequence, and as you are probably aware by now, um, DNA is typically wrapped up uh, into nucleosomes, and not all regions of the genome are wrapped up into nucleosomes. And so, at a basic level, your uh, your genome has regions that are wrapped up into nucleosomes, and those uh, regions that are nucleosome free. And so, uh, we'll discuss uh, histones and nucleosomes uh, more in the epigenomics lecture. And so this uh, lecture will tend more to focus on higher levels of genome organization. So the organization of entire chunks of your chromosomes into what's called topologically associated domains or TADs. And so a TAD is basically just a contiguous segment of one chromosome uh, for which you tend to find a lot of physical interactions between loci within a TAD as opposed to interactions between some part of a TAD and out some region of the genome outside of the TAD. And so TADs are just, in some sense, uh, a somewhat loosely compartmentalized section of your chromosome for which you find a lot of interactions uh, within that TAD. Um, and at an even higher level than the TADs, <coughs> it turns out that uh, entire TADs can consist of either regions of the genome that tend to be highly associated with transcriptionally active elements. And there are also TADs that tend to be tend to consist of uh, regions where most of the uh, most of the TAD is transcriptionally inactive. And so you can actually have multiple TADs that group together and interact with each other as well. And those uh, those groups of TADs that uh, are transcriptionally active and tend to interact with each other are called the A component. Uh, whereas the groups of TADs that tend to group together and uh, represent transcriptionally inactive regions of the genome are what are called the B components. Um, it's, it also turns out that entire chromosomes as a whole don't, random, don't really randomly distribute themselves around the nucleus. And so certain chromosomes are known to have certain preference uh, for location within the nucleus. And so even at a kind of macroscopic level, uh, chromosomes, for example, tend to segregate into different regions or what are known as chromosome territories. And so the majority of this lecture is going to basically be about discussing different ways of um, different experimental uh, assays for measuring uh, genomic loci interactions. 
And so they, they basically fall into two categories. Either you're measuring the interaction of genomic loci with um, what's known as relatively fixed nuclear landmarks, such as the nuclear lamina, um, which I'll talk about in a second. And so that involves using techniques like ChIP-seq or DAM-ID. Um, and the other sort of interaction, the other sort of assays help you measure interactions between genomic loci. And so this involves techniques like 3C or HiC. And so we'll start with the assays for measuring interactions with the nuclear landmarks. And so again, this involves techniques like ChIP-seq and DAM-ID. And so the general idea is that these nuclear landmarks, in particular the nuclear lamina, uh, consists of a dense network of proteins. And, and these proteins basically associate with uh, different regions of the genome. And so you can use uh, techniques like ChIP-seq or DAM-ID to basically identify DNA segments that are um, bound by the proteins present in these landmarks, such as the nuclear lamina. And in doing so, you can identify which regions of the genome, for example, are associated with the nuclear membrane. And so just briefly, again, the nuclear lamina, again, is a, is a network of, uh, of proteins, uh, of which the vast majority of the protein content consists of different lamin proteins. And so the general idea is that uh, we want to identify which genomic segments are in close contact with lamin proteins. And because these lamin proteins are associated with uh, the nuclear lamina, and the nuclear lamina is associated with the nuclear uh, membrane, then we can essentially figure out which, uh, which parts of the genome are typically associated with the nuclear uh, membrane and therefore are on the periphery of the nucleus. And so there are two main assays for measuring protein genome interactions. And so you've already been introduced to ChIP-seq. And so very briefly, we can uh, use antibodies specific to lamin proteins to pull down regions of the genome that are associated with the nuclear lamina. Uh, another technique that you can use is called DAM-ID. So DAM-ID uh, relies on the protein domain called uh, DAM-methyltransferase. And so the idea is that this DAM domain is basically capable of methylating adenine in a sequence motif of GATC. Uh, and so if you create a fusion protein of, for example, DAM with, uh, with one of the lamin proteins, then basically what happens is that with DAM tethered to lamin, uh, DAM will basically methylate uh, the GATC motif uh, if, uh, if the associated lamin is close to a region of the genome that also contains that motif GATC.